Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today for this very exciting presentation. My name is Alan McCoy. I am Director of Startup Support at the University of Maryland's UM Ventures. And today's presenter is none other than um, Glenn Hillman, also known as, by a lot of other titles, uh, Glenn is a, a serial entrepreneur, experienced entrepreneur. He is a startup mentor, executive coach. And as of last week, Glenn is also the most recent member of the teaching team for, for the ICO program at the University of Maryland. So very, very excited, Glenn, to have you join. Thank you. University of Maryland, now you're my colleague. So this is- Again. <laughs> yes. So Glenn will talk to us about how to pitch um, and how to pitch properly. And he's done that many times. I've seen him coach. Um, multiple startups um, very, very successfully. So that's why I asked him to do this presentation for us. And again, for those who just joined us, we are recording the initial part of Glenn's presentation and then I will stop recording um, and we will start the interactive part so that um, more people would be encouraged to participate. In the meantime, please do submit your questions in the Q&A function. All right, Glenn, I'm gonna go ahead, turn off my mic and my camera and you take it away. Okay. So folks, I've been raising money. Uh, I started with startups in 1978 upon graduating from the, U the University of Maryland and have been in startups ever since. Uh, raised money for my first startup that I was one of the founders in, in uh, 1992. Uh, since then, I've raised over $70 million worth of capital for companies. I have one IPO in my, uh, under my belt, two uh, M&As, one significant $100 million cash m and I've been on boards, uh, and I was uh, a, an angel investor for 10 years. So uh, I have looked at uh, pitches, and I know which pitches have uh, resonated with me and the ones that I would invest in. And what you're going to see today is all based on that experience. So the other thing is, and this will be valuable, depending on how much time we have, I am going to try to interview out of some lucky participants what their first three slides of their pitch would be for their company. Uh, in a classroom, this is really easy to do, and I usually can get everybody in the classroom in a session like this, but we'll try to get at least three, uh, and I'll help you do your first three slides. So as we talk about pitching, the first thing that everybody should be aware of is people do not make decisions logically. There, we don't make decisions with our neocortex, the highly evolved, very recent part of, of the brain. We make decisions with the same part of the brain that dinosaurs had, that reptiles have, and it is a very simple uh, computer. It makes decisions on things that are black and white. It sees no grays. So there's good and there's bad. It's very visual. Matter of fact, your eyes are directly connected to that part of the brain. Um, that's why a picture tells a thousand words because words exist in the neocortex. The part of the brain that makes decisions doesn't understand language. It is programmed to avoid danger. And when you're pitching, you need to understand that every person looking at your pitch, every person is saying, give me a reason not to invest in this. Because if I invest in it, I'm taking reputational risk, I'm taking cash risk, I'm taking a risk. This part of the brain is self-centered. It wants to focus in on what's in it for me. It, it makes decisions on emotional things and it you need tangible proof you can't just say it's the best you need to show why it is so much black and white better than anything else so that's the part of the brain we're going to be pitching to the other thing is in your first pitch you're not looking to get married you're looking for a date so it's like tinder you just want to get a date and in that date and during the dating process, you'll worry about getting married, but it's, you're just going for a date. So you want to keep it high level. You don't want to get into the weeds. 
If you make bread, for instance, if you have the best bread since sliced bread, um, you don't want to tell an investor exactly how you make bread. You want to tell them how they'll make dough from investing in your bread. So you don't want to get in the weeds. You want to keep it simple and compelling. And you want to make it a story. You want, so you don't want to have 12, 10 slides that are independent. You want to make it a story. So I'm going to teach you about that story. This is the worst slide I've ever created. Well, not ever, but since I've learned how to do slides. What you need to understand is right now, all of you are reading this slide and not paying attention to me, which is fine. That's the purpose. But there's too much stuff on this slide. There's not any focus. Uh, I think the takeaway from this slide is not going to move you. It's not going to be memorable. But what is important in this slide is pitching is a three chapter story. Chapter one is hurt rescue. You want to make the investor understand the pain and actually feel the pain of your best user. Because without pain, there is no change. So we all sell pain. It's hurt, rescue, and then a little bit of how many people you can rescue after you hurt them. Chapter two is, chapter one, let's assume that we've gotten the investor sold on our deal. They, they say, hey, this is a great idea. This is a great product. Chapter two is, why should I trust you to execute it? There's probably other teams doing things just like this. Are you, are, you, are you the bozos I want to give money to? So that's what chapter two is all about, de-risking it. And chapter three is for the investor to think about what's in it for me. If I rest, I'm going to, uh, if they're a VC, they're not investing their money, they're investing other people's money. It's reputational risk. If they're an angel, they got to go home to their family, their husband and, or their wife and say, hey, hun, I just put $30,000 of our hard-earned capital into this thing. So there's cash risk, there's reputational risk, and you need to outweigh that risk with what the gain is, what is in it for me. Some simple rules. If anybody knows Guy Kawasaki, he's an angel investor. He's, uh, he's a, uh, a well-known speaker, very affable guy, known for his smile. He has uh, three simple ru rules for presentations, the 10, 20, 30 rule. No more than 10 slides because that we, we get bored easy and we start thinking about other things. You need to make it crisp. I'm sorry. Uh, and 20 is not, what's the 20 piece? I'm sorry. I screwed up here. 30 point uh, font. Your font should be 30, 30. It's 10 slides, 20. Somebody look it up for, and we'll get it later. I forgot what it is. So keep it clean. Your language and your slides. Oh, somebody raised a hand. I bet you put it in chat. Help us. Look it up. Um, the fewer the bullets and words, the better. Five bullets max on a slide. Five to seven words per bullet. You want your audience to pay attention to you and not the words on your slide. You don't want them reading the slide. You want them to look at you. You want them to see your presence. They want, you want to command the room. You don't want them distracted. Um, I'm going to go look at chat, see what we got here. No more than 20 words. No more than 20 minutes. Yeah, that's it. 20 minutes. 20 minutes, not 20 words. Thank you. Um, so fewer bullets. Now, I have found that um, every time you're done with your presentation, if you go back to the presentation and say, how can I make it more word efficient? What can I eliminate? And put a goal to eliminate 20% of the words. You'll do it. Your presentation's better. Remember, the slides reinforce your opinion, but 
the people watching your presentation aren't going to remember the slides. So uh, you, you notice that I have visuals on every one of my slides because a picture tells a thousand words. So I'd rather have a picture than a lot of words. One of the hardest things to do is uh, present and talk about competition. Who are my competitors? And there's a couple methods to do it. I find the best way to do it, the easiest way to do it is using the uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant. Um, the Gartner Magic Qua uh, Quadrant is, it's easy to understand. Most people who are investors, all VCs understand the Gartner Quadrant and they always wanna look for something that's top right on the quadrant. So uh, if you're doing one of your, if you're doing your slides, one of the things to remember is if it's less expensive versus, um, you don't wanna say on the left, cheaper and on the right, if, if you're using the horizontal axis, expensive, because then you're gonna be on the bottom of, the, or on the left-hand side of the slide, you wanna say expensive, inexpensive, or value, high value, something else so that you drive your slide up to the right. Um, I'm gonna, by the way, I'm gonna do a sample pitch for a pretend company too, to so give you an example of some of this stuff. Now, the number two, the checkbox, it's not a great, uh, it's not a great method. It's got too much stuff in it, um, but some people, some people, some products need to use the matrix checkbox. The pedal is uh, another method, and the time to use the path pedal is if you don't really have um, direct competitors. This is a new, uh, new genre, a new kind of thing, but there are adjacent technologies where you will be drawing users to from. So uh, for instance, TV, radio, you know, if you're the first TV, you're going to draw audiences away from print. You're going to draw audiences away from radio. So you'll have radio stations and television or and and you know newspapers and magazines in your pedal. So look up the pedal, it's an interesting thing. It's to me more confusing. And again, when you're in that first pitch, what we wanna do is just get a second date. We're gonna dig into who your competition, if, if you get somebody interested, and if they call you and wanna talk about more things, if they set up a follow-on meeting, you're gonna have a real chance to talk about competition. And that's more important than what you're doing here. What you're doing here is to show the investors that one, you can sell, you can make things simple, you understand your product and you have command and presence. So to me, the Gartner method, the Gartner magic quadrant is the best, best method. It's quick and it's crisp. You are going to be evaluated on multiple levels. So when the person is looking at you do your pitch, they're gonna ask themselves, is this person a leader? Can this person lead a team? Can this person influence a market? Um, so there's a lot of things going on about you. You're being evaluated. So it's very important that you stand up big. It's very important that you use your hands correctly, that you don't get distracted. Don't have change in your pocket and put your hands in your pocket. The other thing is, it's how you tell your story. So a really good, well-constructed story um, tells a lot about how you are as a strategic thinker, how you see a market, how you understand a market. And then design, layout, and slides says, am I dealing with a bunch of clowns or are these people pros? Aim for no more than 10 slides. Keep them simple, clean, visually stimulating, and remember, your goal is uh, to get a second date. Now, 
another thing I'll point out is if you've noticed during this presentation, every time I do a new slide, there is a new background. There's not this, I'm not trying to put people to sleep with some boring template with my corporate logo and other things. These, these investors know who you are. You tell them in the first slide, they're, they've got written material. They know who you are. What you want to do is be like a music video. You want to keep their attention. You want to, if anybody, if when you watch a movie, you don't see somebody walking down the hall, all the way down the hall with one shot. You see different angles. You see different shots. You see a lot of different movement. And that's to keep the audience engaged. You want to do the same thing with your slide. You want every slide to, to wake that person up and say, hey, there's something new here. Okay, I'm going to just look and see if we have any questions before we go into the presentation for a company that I want you guys to invest in. Okay, so I just want to tell you, I am uh, Glenn Hellman. And uh, one thing that Allah didn't tell you is I invented aspirin. And uh, what I'd like to show you today is why you should invest in aspirin ink, because aspirin ink is going to change the world. Okay, Glenn, let's figure out what you did here. Okay. I'm going to, what if your head hurts so bad? I want you to imagine that you are a, that you're um, a working mom. You go to work every day. You got two kids you've got to take care of. And you have another problem. You get frequent headaches. Headaches so bad that you can't see, you can't drive. When your kids need you, you can't pay attention to them. You can hardly focus. Imagine that person. Imagine that person's life. And it happens two or three times a week. There are 45 million Americans that suffer from chronic headaches. Now, what if by just taking two little pills, 90% efficacy, that headache goes away. And you can pick up your kids, you can talk to your kids, you can go to work, your life would be changed. Would you pay a small fee under a dollar to have your headache go away? I'm sorry, so what we just did there, there's two words that I always want, want use in a pitch. And that is, and this goes back to the, uh, this goes back to the primitive part of the brain, the reptilian brain. When you say imagine, you start creating images in your brain and um, those images resonate. So when I start telling a story about this person with pain, I have zeroed in on my exact best client for this product, the person who has the most pain and would get the most benefit. Later on, I can talk about how many people there are who have that pain and other uses for this product, for instance, bringing down swelling, bringing down fever. But I want to focus in on just one item, and that's because the reptilian brain can't deal with abstractions and large numbers, large concepts are abstractions, but focusing in on one individual, they, um, the reptilian brain can relate on that. And when I say imagine, it brings a picture in your brain. So if I told you guys to don't think of, don't imagine a pink elephant, Every single one of you just saw a pink elephant. I guarantee it. If you didn't see a pink elephant, raise your hand. Now, some of you saw really big pink elephants. Some of you saw really small ones. Some were little fuzzy dials. And oh my God, somebody raised their hand. Okay, I'm going to make you do a pitch now. You're, we're going to do your pitch. Um, but um, you all saw a pink elephant. And if you haven't seen one by now, 
So we want to draw, we want to create images in a person's brain. Imagine you are, and we want to put them in the seat of pain. Imagine you are a working mom. The next thing is, what if? So my first slide is always, imagine you are, and my second slide is always, what if? What if you could? The third slide, I'm looking at Q&A. No, you are, to say, you are supposed to say imagine. Imagine you are is a word you should say. Imagine you are A, and then put that audience in the seat of pain, okay? Um, let me give you another example. Um, company I work with, um, it, it created sort of fire drills, simulated what happens when a company is being attacked, a cyber attack takes place. And it happens all over the place and they simulate it. So it's like a fire drill for cyber attacks. And if I was selling that, what I would say is, um, actually, I'd tell a, a slightly different story. I would say, imagine you were uh, flying on an airplane. And imagine if that airplane got struck by lightning and the, um, one of the two engines went out and it's having electrical problems. And imagine if your pilot, this has never happened to them before. Would you wanna be on that plane? Or how about if this pilot had been on a simulator and had seen this exact problem 15, 20 times? You'd seen it so much that in muscle memory, they can say, okay, I've seen this. I know what buttons to press. I know what to do. And I know how to handle this issue. Which plane would you rather be on? Well, fire drill does the same thing for cyber attacks. Let's say that your experience is cyber attack. Would you want to be the CISO whose reputation is hung on being able to protect all the people in your banks, all your depositors' private information, would you want to be the CISO of a company where nobody has ever seen this situation before or where people have gone through constant drills and understand that when this happens, let's shut this down, let's go over to this, let's switch these switches, so that they've seen this kind of attack before and they can react very quickly. Which company would you rather be? So that's sort of what we want to do in a pitch is, um, so I did it a different way. One thing I did is everybody in the audience has been on an airplane. So I'm trying to paint the picture of what a simulator, the value of a simulator. So um, if your concept is very difficult to understand and difficult to relate to, look for metaphors that are very close and make the relationship between that metaphor and your product, like I did with fire drill. <laughs> Make sense? Okay. On your team slide. You don't wanna give a lot of detail. They're gonna look at your team and you're gonna to wanna to give a lot of confidence that people you have are in relatable issues. I will tell you that most startups I've been in or even invested in, the team slide has been very weak and it hasn't, the slide weakness has not infringed on our ability to uh, attract investors. So you're going to look at your team and say, geez, I got really one person who's uh, very well versed in the art that uh, in the art, the product that we're doing, but nobody's, I don't have a full team. I don't want you to worry about that, but I do want you to figure out how can you give confidence that this team can execute. 
so this 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 the team slide has to, this is uh, by the way we're in chapter two now what we're trying to do is say this is why i have sold the fact that people get headaches and people need a solution by the way uh, i've already sold that idea now what i want these investors to say is all right should i do it with these guys are these guys able to execute so the team slide helps them understand that this slide needs a lot of work on your part to build a team, to give them confidence. How are you gonna take the product to market is also important. So don't forget, just having a great idea doesn't sell product. Um, I'm an old guy, so I don't know if you guys remember this, but when we used to have videotapes, to record shows, Sony had beta. Beta was a much better, technically, technically a better format. In fact, all the uh, production, all television production recorded in beta. But VHS, which was an inferior product, took over the market. And that's because VHS had a go-to market strategy. Um, Oracle. In the old days, uh, when people were selling relational databases, this is in the early 90s, Oracle had the worst product out of the five competitors in the market. They had the best sales force. The joke used to be, and this is how old this was, the joke used to be because all of the competitors had to run on many different computers. Operating systems had not standardized to just two or three operating systems. HP had their own operating system. Digital equipment had their own operating system. Everybody had their own operating system. <clears throat> so um, one of the things you had to do was run on multiple operating systems. Uh, the joke for Oracle was, what platform does Oracle run best on? The answer, 35 millimeter slide, because that's how we did presentations back in those days. We didn't have PowerPoint. Um, the other thing, the joke about Oracle was, uh, Oracle has two kinds of sales reps, those who made their numbers last month and the new guys. So they were a marketing, they, their product didn't work very well. They fixed the, that later, but they took over the market and crowded out better technologies because they had a better go-to-market strategy. Go-to-market is really important. It is more important than the quality of your tech. Here's our competition slide. And as I told you, uh, um, we're in the top right. People say, hey, Glenn, what are you doing here? What, tea, coffee? Co By the way, coffee, caffeine. Uh, caffeine is very good. It, not very good, but it helps with headaches. People want to know why is the hammer there? Because I will tell you that if you've ever hit your head with a hammer, when you stop, it really feels good. So that's sort of one of our competitors for aspirin ink. Financials. Now we're in chapter, we, we've, we've made people, we've tried to make people have confidence that we can execute, that we're well positioned in the market, we have a team and we have a plan. Now what we wanna start focusing in on is what's in it for the investors. So we wanna, first of all, when you show your financials, don't give them numbers. Don't just give them a spreadsheet, show it graphically. So do graphs and make it simple. So when you look at this graph, you get the picture. If I give you the numbers, they're gonna be reading the graph. I mean, they'll be reading your uh, spreadsheet. Tell them what you're looking to get out of this deal. So it's a 10 million series A round. Um, tell them what you're going to do with the money. Uh, are there? So, you know, we still have some patent work to protect our technology. We want to get some inventory in house so we can start shipping. But if you notice, 60% of the money I bring in is going to be used for getting that product in the market. The more money spent on R&D, the more risky 
the more time it will take and the more hurdles a company will have to uh, jump over before they get to profitability and the more risk that they won't become profitable. So the more you can drive your financial plan towards taking it to market versus proving it works and battle hardening it, the better. Um, and then what I'm trying to show, and, and by the way, the $1 billion exit, that's based on comparable companies who are, have gone public or have been purchased in our market that have done similar things and had a similar revenue trajectory that we've had. And basically that's it. I'm gonna stop sharing. And what I'd like to do is work on the first three slides for some of your companies and ideas. Um, so uh, any hands up for somebody who wants to have me interview out of you what your imagine you are statement should be, what your what if statement should be, and then it's very important after we say, you know, so after we talk about this person who had a headache and this person who uh, we can solve that headache and that that person would pay a dollar every time we uh, solve that network, that's very low level. That's the part of the back of our brain can process that, our reptilian brain can relate to that one person. Then we can build it up to the abstract, the abstract being that just for headaches alone, this is a 200 million market based on those numbers, based on how many people have headaches, how many often they have headaches and what they would pay. This is just 200 million. In addition to that 200 million, we haven't even addressed the fact that we can go after people with fever to bring down fever, bring down swelling in, you know, and we know that just those markets give us the potential uh, addressable market it's a, it's a $20 billion market opportunity. So Glenn, we do have a raised hand. I'm gonna okay. go ahead and stop the recording so we can have a more active interactive session. Okay, very good. All right, so I'm gonna stop the recording.